welcome back to the fourth episode of Wildfire Podcast. I'm today's host, Haley Hernandez, and I'm joined here with a very special guest. Hey guys, it's Lucas Goulart. How are you today? Doing well. Got a big day, but I'm hanging in there. Ooh, what do you have coming? Homecoming. All of the above with homecoming. That seems very interesting. How old are you? I'm still 17. I'm turning 18 this upcoming November. Looking forward to that birthday, for sure. So I'm assuming you're class of 2024? Yep. Are you scared? A little bit of scared, a little bit of excited. Hmm. Do you think you're prepared? I would say so. I'm pretty sure I'm prepared for everything that we got going on this year. What motivates you the most? I would say that I'm motivated the most by the things I'm passionate about. Um, a lot of things I do, I do it because of my passions, for sure. What's one thing you're passionate about? I'm really passionate about uh, mental health awareness. So that's been mm. my big thing the past few years. I've been really active in advocating for that. That's very good. Are you involved in your community? I would say so. I think I'm involved in too many things uh, <laughs> for me to handle. But I try to uh, help out whenever I can. What drove you to who you are today? Like, what impacted you the most, you would say, to become the person you are now? I would say that I was impacted a lot by the people I surrounded myself with. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, I've was i been lucky to grow up in a family that uh, has given me a lot of care, shown me a lot of love, and then I was also lucky to make a lot of good friends that showed me the same sort of care and love, and I think that really shaped who I am today. That's very sweet. What is your favorite childhood memory? Hmm... When I was younger, I was a big Lego kid. Like mm -hmm. I, all, I had these huge bins of Legos. I'd spend hours in the Lego section in Target. Um, every single night, I'd ask my brother, hey, can we play Legos? Hey, can we play Legos? So I think when I was younger, I was my biggest memory was definitely playing with the Legos. I can relate to that. Me and my brother, we have like shelves filled with Legos. Which ones did you like the most? Was it like Minecraft, like Ninjago? I was a big, big like Star Wars kid. Star Wars kid? Oh my goodness. My brother has a, uh, that green thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the green thing. That's, that's what I remember it as. Um, let's, um, favorite holiday. I feel like favorite ho holidays say something about a person. It is sort of the cliche but I do love Christmas I'm just <laughs> I like the season I like the idea that you get to spend time with your family and spend time with your friends and yeah. watch Christmas movies go Christmas shopping and I really love giving gifts because I like to see the smiles on people's faces when I, I give them something I feel like that is a very important thing you know cherishing the friends surrounded you know um I did that as well. That's my favorite holiday, especially because I feel like it's very valuable the time you spend with your loved ones. What are your favorite hobbies? Um, hmm. That's hard. I spend a lot of time doing the stuff that I do uh, at school, but I think my favorite thing is probably... I like to listen to music. I've got a record player back home that I got for Christmas, and I like to go to one of our local stores downtown called The Rabbit Hole, and they have a huge record section, and I love to sort of explore music from the 60s and the 70s and some of the newer stuff. I, I, I love music. What's your favorite genre? That's hard. It, like, shifts every month. But right now <laughs> I'm, like, more alternative rock, stuff like that. Favorite band? The Arctic Monkeys right now. Really? I love some of their songs. Um, I feel like when quarantine hit, I, that's when I started, like, developing more of who I am, like, music taste, like, although I can't tell you anything that I like these days. Um, <laughs> um, if you had to write a book, what would it be about? I think if I wrote a book, it'd be, it wouldn't have, like, a plot, it'd just be, like, a scattered collection of different life experiences I've mm -hmm. had, because I feel like I've learned a lot from different things I've done, and I want to share my perspectives and share my ideas with people and hopefully uh, help others as, as they go through their life experiences. Yeah, a more relatable thing. I feel yeah. like nowadays it's being more, um, more, what's the word? I want to say like adapted to. Like before you wouldn't think that your normal like 
going out or something you've just experienced is just not a, like normal. Like everyone's being more aware of other experiences and adapting to it and not just first on judging it, you know, as it comes. So I feel like if you could write a book and that would be what I would I'd definitely read it because I feel like it's very important to understand where others come from as well and get their view and their perspective because it's not always going to be the same, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, now, this is kind of a tricky question. If you don't know it, I could, I could definitely help you on that because I had to do my research. Um, what is your anagram type? So please educate me. What, <laughs> what would be the what is an anagram type? So an anagram is more like um, I want to say it's um, excuse my camera roll. <laughs> it's basically like a description of you. Like a it's it can be seen as a stereotype, but here are some. You got the reformer, the helper, the achiever, the individualist, the investigator, the loyalist, the enthusiastist the challenger, and the peacemaker. Those are some examples of some. So I I can see how it would be resembled as a stereotype if you feel to go back and forth if you'd like. Um, But I feel like this is really like, it kind of reflects on who you are as a person, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, Like what you want to go after or how you want to accomplish things in certain ways. Um, It definitely reflects on people's personality. And I feel like that's a big and a big thing, you know, you should see as soon as you meet someone, not ultimately judging someone by their cover, but by getting to know them. Mm, this is difficult because I'm, I'm seeing, like, traits from a bunch of different ones that I feel yeah. like fit. Like, I've got a lot of the performer, or the reformer, like, the purposeful. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the investigator type because although I'm not, like, isolated, I'm very curious and I like to figure things out yeah and then I also like the uh, number seven the enthusiast because I find myself to be pretty spontaneous and I like to experience new things I could see you as a leader like I know it's not on here but in many cases leaders are very passionate about what they do they are very helpful they um they're very um involved and like like, like you said, you know, you may not like you're an investigator, but like you like being aware of what others do. And so, so I could see you as like, you know, a leader, a little Thank spy. You. Thank you. <laughs> Have you ever watched Spy Kids? A long time ago. <laughs> I could see you as the brother who wants to like accomplish everything. So that's definitely something. Now, what's your biggest pet peeve? Ooh, I'm really, really big about this one. I. <laughs> I don't like when people walk slow. I have heard this so much. Because, you know, when you're, like, walking up the stairs and, like, this person's, like, so slow. Like, you're just trying to go up the stairs and get to your class, you know, or at least talk to a friend or something, something productive. And they're just in your way. Yeah. I've been told that I walk with a purpose before. (laughs) Like, I walk really fast and I have this, like, pep in my step where I'm just Uh going and going and going. And then when... I end up behind someone that's walking slow. It just kills everything. Dude, that that ruins my mood because, you know, I'm just like, why are you walking slow? <laughs> I, I I definitely have the same pet peeve. What's the weirdest food combination you've tried? Oh. Here, I'll give an example. So, um, quarantine. I love mangoes. Mm-hmm. And I love spicy stuff, too. This is right before I got told I couldn't eat spicy foods. I would eat... Like, it didn't matter what kind of spicy chip, but, like, for example, hot Cheetos or, like, Takis, Mm -hmm. I'd eat that with mango. Oh. It is really good. I still eat this till this day. Like, it is amazing. I introduce, like, everyone I know to it, and I'm so passionate about it because it's, like, the right amount of juice and, like, um, sweet, but not, like, you know, really over the top, but with some spice and crunch because, you know, when you, like, have a sandwich and, like, I don't know if you've ever done this either, but you put a chip in it, like, yeah. especially during mm-hmm. the summer. I, I put Doritos in my ham sandwiches. That combination is just, like, that's what it reminds me of. It's it's amazing. Um, I 100% recommend that you should check it out because that is my go-to when I have nothing to eat. <laughs> For me, um, I'm thinking back to when I was little, and so my aunt on my mom's side used to live in North Dakota, and now mm-hmm. she's in, like, South Carolina. She moves all over the place. But, um... Every time she would come over, 
there was this particular snack that we always ate together, and it was nacho cheese Doritos and marshmallows. Oh. <laughs> I couldn't tell you, like, where that came from. I think it's just because as a little kid, you like chips and you like marshmallows. So that's what I wanted, and it just became a thing. You know what? I'm going to definitely invest into that because <laughs> I am all for trying new foods. I live with a vegetarian aunt, a vegan uncle, um, and they're both gluten-free, dairy-free. Mm-hmm. So the amount of foods they make that I'm just like, what is this? She will literally be like, Haley Grace, you have to try this. Haley Grace. <laughs> and she won't stop because she named me. Her name is Grace. So she was like, okay, your name is going to be Haley Grace. So now every time she's like coming to me, she's like, Haley Grace, I literally named you. You have to try <laughs> this food. So there's always been like a random thing in my face that I just have to eat. And the newest thing that she kind of came up with was like, egg plant with uh, like breadcrumbs and some spice I was like what is this like okay the first bite wasn't the best but after a while I got used to it and it was really good so I'm all for different foods um let's see um if you could have coffee with a historical figure who would it be so first thing I want to preface I don't actually drink coffee (gasps) I don't enjoy it so we're gonna say that I'm having (laughs) Like a chai or just some sort oh, of tea. Oh, chai is to die for. And I don't know if this is breaking the rules. It's not really a historical figure, but uh, Robin Williams, my favorite actor. He, he was incredibly he funny, was... incredibly charismatic. I love all the roles he played, and I would really love to just sit down and have a chat with him. I could see him as a historical figure. I feel like he impacted a lot of people with, you know, his acting and everything. He yeah. was just like, his whole personality seemed like so sweet and so wholesome but very, like, passionate about what he did, you know? Um, I, I, and I love Chai, too, so I'm definitely for that. <laughs> We're going to lean towards more your school, your schoolwork, your academics, your involvement. All right. So what are the clubs you are involved in? Um, I've been with the Star Club for a few years. I was sort of initiated by my brother because he was the president when he was a senior, so... Uh, since he was my ride by default, I kind of went to the meetings. And then uh, last year and this year, I've become super involved in that. It's been like the main club that I've been with. Um, I'm also in Sparking Friendships. Um, we do meetings uh, on Tuesdays during lunch. And I think it's a really, really interesting opportunity and a good thing to be a part of because it helps integrate um, our special education students um, into our school environment. And it helps them build relationships with our regular education students. I think it's a really cool thing to see. That sounds amazing. That's, that's a great impact for both students and experiences. What is the STAR Club about? The STAR Club is, uh, it stands for Students Taking Active Roles. And the idea is that we're just trying to promote a more positive environment on campus. So some of the things we do, we help organize the campus cleanups. Um, we've painted what we call our kindness rocks and we hide them all over campus and then they usually have a little positive message. Um, we did chalk drawings last year during AP testing season with just like some encouraging messages for our students walking by in the quad. They could see like, hey, you got this or you're super smart, stuff like that. We just want to promote the well-being of our students. That seems amazing. Very motivating. I love that. Um, so you're ASB president. How and, like, what was your process and just journey of getting to there? Yeah, so when I was a sophomore, I was not in student government, and I sort of got a little interested in it, because after, it was like after football games, I would help clean up, sometimes I'd help set up, because I knew the, I know the uh, student government teacher very well, Mrs. Sylvia, I've known her since I was very, very small, (laughs) um, So I just figured, you know, I'll help out. And then at the end of sophomore year, I was thinking, well, maybe I'll run for student government office. And I ended up running unopposed for a junior class president. So I got that. And then last year, I had a lot of experience putting on prom, putting on other events. And it turned out it was something I was really interested in. So this year, I decided that ASB was definitely for me. Did you always see yourself there? Or was it just a spur of the moment? Uh, I didn't always see myself there when I was younger. I was a little more reserved. I didn't really enjoy being any sort of focal point or center of attention. I just wanted to be off to the side. Um, 
but as I got older and as I developed and sort of grew out of those habits, I definitely uh, think it was right for me to get involved. What inspired you to come all this way and be this huge authority figure for not only students, but, you know, maybe um, the staff, too? Like, just you just seem like a very um, social figure, a huge one of all around the school. I'm really inspired by our students and our teachers and our staff because I feel like we have a lot of good people on campus here. And um, I feel like if I put myself in a role where I can be a big part of promoting different things on campus, um, I'd like to sort of give back to those people that I feel like are really great and have given a lot to me. And that's why I'm inspired. Like you said, Miss Silva, you've come since you were little, right? Yeah. Do you consider her one of like, your greatest like inspiration figures for sure I think uh to her she feels more like a family member than a teacher um I grew up friends with uh her son Noah Sylvia uh we went to elementary school together so I've known their whole family for a really long time and they've been nothing but courteous to me she's always listened to my crazy ideas and I think that she's a huge inspiration for me that, that seems really sweet, you know? Um, the fact that you even, like, kind of grew up with her and her family. It's not just, like, a friendship or a bond. It's more than that. What advice would you give to the freshmen or upper, I mean, lower classmen in general? Uh, the advice I give to underclassmen is um, something that somebody told me one time, and it was, take off your cool jacket. And then what that means is you're still a kid. You're, <laughs> you're not as cool as you think you are. <laughs> so... While you're a kid, you need to enjoy the things that you have in front of you. So if you take off your cool jacket, you have the opportunity to live those experiences and be who you are without worrying about what others think. And I think that's really important for our underclassmen because I know that going into high school is a crazy experience and there's a lot of naysayers among the people who are also going to support you. And I think it's really, really important to focus on how you want to live your life rather than how other people think you should. That, that's very, very sweet and inspirating. Um, what is your goals? Like, do you plan to attend college and what majors? Yeah, I'm uh, planning to attend a four-year university after I graduate. As of right now, studying political science, but I wouldn't be surprised if in another month it changes and then <laughs> it changes again. Um, but I for sure want to get my four-year degree, and depending on where college takes me, I may have a career right out of my four-year degree. Um, I could go to grad school, um, but overall, regardless of where I end up, what I want to make sure I do in life is uh, I want to make an impact on people, and I want people to know that I can be a person for them to go to if they need it, so that would probably be my biggest goal i feel like we need more people like you because i i also want to do the same i want to major in political science and i want to be a journalist and you know kind of inspire and impact young adults especially because i feel like not many people focus on them as much especially with this generation and i don't think they realize that in order to have a successful economy you really just need to um help those who are going to rule those successful, you know, businesses and stuff. Um, I love that. That seems really nice. So lastly, what is a book you recommend? Hmm. I haven't been much of a reader for a while, (laughs) but I started to get back into reading recently. Um, A book that I started a month or so ago, but I've had to put on hold because I've got schoolwork and other books I have to read for English class. Um, It's called Lone Woman by, can't forget the author's, can't remember the author's name, but uh, it was published recently from an English professor at Columbia University. It's a really, really good uh, historical fiction sort of mystery thing going on. Um, It's sort of a niche subject, so if you're not a big history person, you may not like it, but I find it really interesting. I love history. I think it's important to learn what not to repeat and what to, you know, evolve from, you know? Um, thank you for coming. Thank you for having this me. This has been a really nice podcast. And
interview? Wildfire was brought to you by the Lodi High Journalism Team. Come by every Tuesday for the inside scoop here at Lodi. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Bye.